Hello and welcome. My name is Clarissa. I am a nerdy freelance artist who loves Disney and drinks way too much tea. In today's art vlog, I'm going to talk about how I paint wood grain and how I prioritize things that are in my middle ground on a large scale piece like my latest commission. I've been doing a whole series with speed paints of this commission while I break down different steps in my typical commission process. All of those videos will be linked in the description box down below, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for a notification every time I upload a video because this is definitely an ongoing process and there will be more videos to come. One of the best parts about commissioning custom artwork is that you can get a very unique and personalized piece. It's not just something that you pick up at Hobby Lobby or wherever that literally hundreds or thousands of people are going to have the same exact thing on their wall. In this case, the clients are a husband and wife and they wanted me to do a painting of their two dogs and six cats. But they had a lot of really fun, unique, and personal twists to this that really make this piece one of a kind. For instance, the wife really loves peacocks, and they were hoping that I could find a way to work that in as sort of like an Easter egg. They were fine with it not being involved, but they were kind of hopeful because they thought it'd be a fun little detail, but they didn't want that to be a major aspect of the piece. But this painting involves two wooden chairs, so I'm taking the backs of the chairs and putting in a decorative carved peacock on each of those. And this is definitely one of the deceptive challenges of this piece because Two little wooden bistro chairs does not sound all that fancy or complicated, but I definitely want the wood grain to look realistic and interesting and identifiable, especially the peacock carving aspect of it, but the chairs are not the focus of the image since they're sort of like a mid-ground sort of unfocused portion of the overall image, I have to be careful that I don't put too much detail, contrast, and focus in that area of the painting. I handle wood grain very similar to how I painted something like the striped fur on the cats, and that video is linked down below. I start with a base mid-tone over the entire area that I'm working on, and then I break the subject down into simpler sections. Then I shade each section as if it is a solid colored object. I worked a carved sort of double beveled border around the backs of each chair to add a little depth and interest without getting it too crazy complicated and detailed. Once I had the majority of the chair backs and seats roughly colored and shaded in, I went ahead and started adding my wood grain. I shifted the values of the wood grain similarly to how I shifted the base colors beneath them. So in a shaded area, the wood grain is typically darker than an area where the wood is getting a lot more sun and light cast onto it would be. We wanted this piece to be fun and a little tongue-in-cheek, so it borders slightly on the surreal. Which works well with my almost impressionistic style, so I can really play up the details and aspects that I want, and let the other less important things sort of fade back a little bit. Another one of the big challenges of this piece is that I'm combining a lot of different reference photos between each of the different animals, different portions of the background and landscape. There's a lot of different reference photos that I'm combining into one piece, and each of those had their own light source. In addition, these chairs are 100% out of my mind. There is no reference photo because I made up these chairs. So I had to use a sort of combination of my own art training and educated guesses on some of the lighting throughout this painting. But that doesn't mean I'm 100% on my own. Reference images are 
key. For some reason, a lot of beginning artists feel like it's cheating to look at a reference photo, and that is absolutely not the case. For instance, here I used images of a bunch of different carved wooden pieces that were in the approximate color and detail levels that I was looking for. It obviously wasn't a carved peacock on a piece of wood in the right lighting that I was looking for, but it gave me an idea how the different shapes would work. For instance, the much larger dog on the left side is obviously going to be blocking a lot more light on his chair than the much smaller dog on the right hand side will of his. So I made the entire chair on the left hand side a little bit darker overall than the entire chair is on the right hand side. I used a lot of the same colors and paints between the two chairs, but by using a lot more of the lighter colors on one and the darker colors on the other, it adds a level of realism and depth. I didn't want the carvings to stand out as super important, but I did want them to show up. So I went ahead and did the rest of all of the wood and got that completely done and let that dry. Then I went back and painted all of the carved section on top of it to again, add that level of depth. I always work back to front whenever possible. It's a nice little cheat to add that extra layer of depth to your piece. same exact process of mid-tone, shading, and then details, but in this case I used curved lines for the wood grains more so that it would give the impression of there being raised and lowered sections of the carving. The whole time that I'm working on these chairs, I have a bunch of different things that I have to keep in mind and keep them balanced visually. First of all, I have to make sure that my lighting makes sense across the entire image, since again, I'm combining all these different images of different light sources. 
And while I want everything in the background to make sense visually and be identifiable, I don't want it to get too detailed, too much contrast, and draw too much focus. The focus of the image needs to stay in the foreground and with the two dogs. So ideally, you will immediately spot the dog and then start looking at all the little interesting little tidbits, but then keep coming back to the dogs. For instance, I wanted to sort of have the minimal amount of chair showing that you could tell that it was furniture that the dog is sitting on, not just a random little brown shape peeking out from behind the animals. But if I included too much of the chair, it would have a lot more detail, it'd be a large, heavy mass that would visually draw a lot of focus. In a case like this, it's really easy to go from a piece about two dogs enjoying some nice wine and the beautiful countryside to, hey, look at this really interesting chair, oh, and there happens to be a dog next to it. When you're doing a custom piece like this, there's a huge area between a fairly straightforward pet portrait that is just a picture of a dog or multiple animals or what have you, and a really interesting and detailed piece that has a ton of different things happening and tells an entire story. And it's up to you as the artist to work with the client to determine where they want to fall on that spectrum. I hope you found this helpful and inspiring. If you did, please like down below. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you next time.